Hi everyone, it's Margaret Manning here with 60 and Me. This is the place where women who are aging beautifully come to be inspired. Today we're going to talk about a topic that a lot of people are asking us about that's in retirement and that's aging in place. And I have two expert speakers here that I've got to ask some questions to and I'm very happy to introduce them to you. My first guest is Brian Harvey. Brian is the owner of Harvey Home Modifications, which is a building and remodeling business in Boston. He is a certified aging in place specialist, a CAPS remodeler. And this is a program designed by the National Association of House Home Builders to help people when they're trying to remodel and modify their homes for aging in place. So welcome, Brian. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you for being here. And my other guest is Anthony Cirillo. Now, Anthony is the president of the AgingExperience.com. This is a place, a, a, a website which puts to the positive spin on aging. He holds, uh, is the creator of an amazing uh, online summit. It's called the Caregiver Smile Summit. It's an online virtual video-based uh, on-demand uh, program where he brings in experts to talk about all aspects of caregiving. Uh, it's a very wonderful uh, series if you're interested. And he's also on the board of SeniorNet, which is a group that um, helps to enable seniors with technology. So a very busy man. Welcome, Anthony. Thanks, Margaret. Glad to be here. I'm really happy to have you two here. We're going to do a series of conversations about this issue of aging in place. In a previous video, we talked about the, just the issues to think about, but I'd like to dig down a bit now. Maybe, Brian, pull you in a little bit more as the remodeler, as the person that does the work. Uh, how to prepare your house for a retrofit. Before you even start thinking about all the issues, Anthony, and you talked about earlier, um, how, how does someone do that? How do you examine your house for a retrofit? Sure. So I would say, um, you know, this is now the step after you've figured out your finances, you've determined your budget and whether it's really feasible for you to be at home with or without care or what level of care. So um, basically when I come in, I would give the family an idea of how far their budget would stretch, um, what kinds of things that would need to be done to the home. Uh, but for the most part, that'll be determined by a physical therapist, an occupational therapist, yeah. and, and the homeowner themselves to really determine which parts of the homes they'd really like to access. Um, and there's a lot of planning that goes into it between architects, structural engineers, um, and, and the planning board for the city. So yeah. th there's a lot of steps before, you know, between determining you have a budget and when you can actually break ground on construction. And you're right. There's so many people involved that there's the medical doctors and, and physiotherapists, as you said, people that know where your uh, weaknesses might be, that you might need railings here or a certain kind of bath or, or shower. So how would you go about doing the um, analysis? I mean, you as a certified aging in place uh, specialist, you got you've had the training to do this, but how else can someone do their physical checking? Yeah, sure. So you, you need to physically walk through their process um, room by room. First, it's got to be you know the driveway. How are you getting in and out and transferring? Whether it's public transportation or it's some kind of special needs transportation like a mobility van. Um, into the home, you know, are you on the second floor? Do you actually need an, an interior or exterior elevator? Would a ramp suffice or is your home uh, low to the ground like a small ranch or cape? Right. Um, and then when you get into the house, do you have ample room, um, you know, if you need to be in a wheelchair for any extended period of time or if that's even a possibility, which really it's a possibility for all of us, right? Um, and then you make your way through the home. Okay, right. now how am I going to get in and out of bed? Is it in a proper location on the first floor? Do I have an accessible bathroom? Can I use my kitchen? And you need to walk through and take a look at at everything. So this is really fascinating. And I mean, I love it because you do this every day. This is your business. But as, it, as you were talking, I was hearing little voices in my ear saying, come on, Margaret, like I'm only 62 years old. Like, you know, what's the deal? I mean, I'm not in a wheelchair. I'm, you know, I hear the conversations. But yeah. Anthony, tell us why this is important for people in their early 60s or 50s to be thinking about. Why, why is it important? 
Well, I mean, if you truly want to age in, in that house, it has to be safe. And uh, <laughs> even us, I'm 62 as well. Uh, you know, I took, a, I took a slip in the shower for the first time ever about a month or so ago. And I had grab bars because we just retrofitted our um, wow. our, our bathroom. Uh, so, uh, luckily I wasn't hurt, but you know, we think even, uh, of course the baby boomers think we were invincible anyway, <laughs> but we, we waged with that <laughs> same sense. Yeah. Uh, and I think, you know, so, uh, you know, don't be fooled that, you know, this yeah. could happen to you. I, I wanted to add on to what uh, Brian was saying, you know, one of my experts on the summit was a woman named Jill. Uh, I think I got this right. Bjerke, B J E R K E. Look her up because she she actually has an app that people can download and do some of this kind of as they're contemplating bringing somebody like Brian into into the picture. And when we, I was interviewing her, I mean, there's some questions she threw out at me that were, uh, it's like, oh, really? I didn't, I, I didn't think about that. Like, you know, how high can you reach? You know, I used to be 5'5". Five, five. Life has pounded me down to 5'3 mm -hmm. three and 3 quarters now. So, you know, uh, can you get out of the tub? Can you repair, uh, can you prepare food? Uh, for yourself? Can you get off the floor if you fall? Um, you know, she talks about smoke alarms. They're great, but what if you're in the farthest regions of your house and your, your uh, you know, um, hearing aids don't work uh, correctly? So there's a lot of things that uh, we need to talk about. And people in our 60s, they, they have hearing aids as well. So, you know, but who, uh, that, that, you know, just things I didn't think about that, uh, you know, can just creep up, surprise you and, lead to, uh, you know, slips, falls, health issues, yeah. And, yeah. and then you can't live there. And right. Anthony and Margaret, I would, yeah. I would add to that. I would say it's important to prepare for the worst case scenario uh, in any mm -hmm. situation because, um, you know, it, if you do $100,000 worth of renovations to your home and it only serves you for a minor uh, setback, then, then you've got big problems and you got to go back to the drawing board. So right. it's important to incorporate universal design and that's a good jumping off point for people looking to renovate. Tell me, you mentioned that before in another conversation. What is universal design? Yeah, universal design just means that um, the space or the home can be used universally by people of all uh, physical okay. capabilities. So whether you're a young, healthy uh, man or woman, um, in your 20s or your, you know, now wheelchair bound later in life, you can access the entire home um, and it'll still look, you know, cosmetically pleasing. Okay. Okay. <laughs> no, I think that both what you're both saying is so powerful. And I think that for the women in our community who are listening to this in their, in their 50s or 60s, you know, just, I think it's a, a mindset shift that you've got to be preparing for. Like you said, uh, for, um, Brian, that a lot of the people you talk to are ones that have had an emergency, that have had a bad fall or have had something they didn't expect. And this is the thing about life. If we don't get a, a memo with the list of things that are going to happen, you know, so it's better to prepare, as you say, for the worst. No, it's a really powerful thing. It's actually funny, Brian, when you're, or Anthony, when you were talking about the uh, shower, it was, uh, I just, I'm staying in a house right now for a year and a half that's got uh, a bath. And I haven't had a bath in like five years. <laughs> No, no, what I meant is I haven't had a, the use of a bath. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I have a shower, but um, I haven't had a bath in my house for like, oh no, longer than that, seven years. And um, I took a bath and then I was trying to get out of the bath and I thought, oh my hmm. God, I didn't put a mat on the floor. You know, like, you know, just to get out, just a simple thing like that. I was like, you know, I'm, I'm 25. I can just jump out of the bath and no problem. <laughs> and I was like, oh, wow. So I grabbed a towel and put it down there because I didn't feel very steady. And sometimes we have an overinflated view of what we can handle. Don't you think that's true? Anthony? I mean, I could tell you after that little slip that I had, uh, I am a lot more ginger <laughs> about the steps I take because I kind of attributed it uh, to the tile and soap and, you know, just yeah. going in too fast, you know, yeah. moving just a little too fast with my feet and they came out from under me. So yeah, you, uh, you think a little bit more gingerly about how you're going to move around for sure. So, okay, so putting baths and showers aside, Brian, what, what kind of, um, what are the big issues that people come, when they come to you for retrofitting a house, what would you say are the top three areas that they consider retrofitting that if you had to think about like the, the big things, what would you say? Yeah, sure. So I'd say of, of the actual construction, the largest projects are entry into the home, um, 
bathroom and bathing and then uh, their bedroom as well. And the bedroom has a lot of, there's a lot of nuances and things you don't think about there, but you spend so much of your time at the house there, especially um, people who are ill or recovering. Mm -hmm. They're spending so much time there. So things like that walk-in closet that was wonderful before is now a nightmare to try to get in there um, and, and put together an outfit. So that's actually... Uh, a huge project, but those are the three really vital areas of the home. And then if someone's budget extends further, um, then we get into things like the kitchen and kitchen, living room yeah. and less important areas. But if you can't get into the home, you can't rest and you can't bathe, then you've got big problems. Yeah. Now, this is really wonderful. I'm really glad that we've got both of you here talking because you're approaching it from a little bit different angle. Um, Anthony's um, uh, summit, by the way, I would really uh, highlight that because you've got experts, like you've already mentioned this lady, I've forgotten her name that you mentioned, Jill, mm -hmm. Jill and another person uh, in an earlier conversation. And these experts are dealing with the sort of the, all the different sort of spectrum of things that then Brian has to deal with when you know, when a caregiver is struggling to make that person comfortable and safe. So it's, I would check, uh, check out Anthony's website. It's um, uh, theagingexperience.com and that will get you to the, to the summit. We'll put all the links in here, um, Anthony. Um, is, is that true, by the way? I mean, I, could you want to reinforce that in any way, the, the advice of the experts on this before they get to Brian? <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I mean, absolutely, because, you know, you may look at some of these issues and decide for yourself that this the aging in place is just not realistic, right? Or uh, it may bring you to a point where, okay, I need to do something. And, you know, one of our experts, I'm going to, I totally, I'm for, forgetting the name, uh, but she can actually go through your house virtually doing what we're doing now. So uh, right. a, a caregiver, a son or daughter can bring a laptop around and Zoom and she can go around and spot things from, you know, slip and fall hazards with rugs to, I mean, she even mentioned satin, satin sheets on beds. I mean, you know, uh, you know how slippery they are and you could fly out of the bed and fall. But again, all these little nuances are things you don't think about. And I think the more you can get some outside advice uh, without putting out the major dollars at first, I think is going to bring your mindset around to the fact that if I'm going to stay here, I may need to do a little bit more than I was just thinking about because right. I think a lot of us on the surface, especially as boomers think, we'll put a few bars in the right places and we'll be, we'll be done with it. I mean, I could tell you my shower, uh, my bathroom is wheelchair accessible. My shower is not. So, you know, and even when we were building it, we knew yeah. we really couldn't yeah. make it that way, but uh, I'm already thinking, you know, how, how would we, of course I need to figure out how to get up to my second floor bedroom, but that's a whole nother <laughs> issue. And by the way, I hope that she allows satin pillowcases because they're very good for no wrinkles. Mm. Did you know mm -hmm. that? that? They recommend you use a satin uh, pillowcase to help with the wrinkles. That's Did another myth, myth of aging. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, but Brian, thank you for your advice too. And I would advise people, if you're in the Boston area, I mean, that's where you do your business. Do you do work around the country as well? Or do you have an association that you connect with? Yeah, well, I'm... I'm um basically from Boston to Worcester, Massachusetts. Um, so right here in the greater Boston area. Sounds like you've got a baby in the background there. I do have a baby in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Is your house baby proof though? It's, yeah, no, it's, it's not. <laughs> it's, not. Look, it's great talking with both of you. We're going to continue the conversation in another video, but I think this has done a really good job of how to prepare your house for a retrofit, the things to think about before you start uh, putting out the money. So thank you, Brian, and thank you, Anthony, very much. If you enjoyed this video, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Our Patreon supporters help us to make a bigger difference in the lives of women over 60 all around the world. They get exclusive videos, live video shows, discounts, and much more. So please look for the link on this page. It is somewhere down here, up there. <laughs> And join our tribe of women in our 60 and Me community who are actually making a big difference in the world, challenging aging stereotypes. So thank you so much for your support.